Hi, this is Carl Polachek with another SOP video for managed service providers. Last time we talked about setting up employee evaluations and quarterly goals and evaluation meetings. Today, I want to take that and put it into a larger context. Setting goals for employees should follow from your hiring process. Today, we're going to talk about where goal setting fits in the bigger picture of hiring and managing employees. Watch that last video and then we'll look at the context. It all starts with defining a specific role. So before you put an ad in the paper, you need to make a list. And literally on the left hand side are all of the things that you need. What skills do you need? What are the tasks that this person should have? What kind of education should they have? What certifications do you want them to have? What training should they have? Right, all of that kind of stuff. And you've seen a thousand ads, but basically you need to focus on what you honestly need. Don't put a bunch of stuff up there that is irrelevant. One of the biggest trends that's happened in the last, I don't know, 50 years is to require things that are not necessary for the job. And a perfect example is, must have a bachelor's degree. Uh, really? <laughs> I mean, I'm all in favor of bachelor's degrees and I got a couple of them and I think uh, everybody should have them. But if that's not required for the job, don't put it on the list of requirements. Define what you actually need that job to do. If it's a level one technician, what are the skills they need to have? They need to have good phone skills. They need to have rational thought processes. They need to work well with others, right? Whatever those lists are, make a long list and you can make that as long as you want. And then we're gonna go over to the next column and that is to define a job advertisement for that position. So in your ad, it should be pretty easy to put together the things that are required, the things that are nice to have and the extra bonus. Hey man, if you got this, you're gonna to go to the front of the line. So take things from this column and move them over and say, all right, this is the order we wanna have this. And so the job description becomes a rough draft of your advertisement, but wait, it gets better. So now you put out an ad, you get some resumes in and you're gonna interview people. Move over to another column and now what you've got is, okay, what are the questions we're going to ask in the interview to verify that this person does have good customer service skills. One of the best things you can do is get away from any question that can be answered with one or two words. Have you got experience doing this, that, and the other thing? Yes. Not helpful. Try to ask questions that are very open-ended and one of the best ways to do that is to start a sentence with, Tell me about a time when you had to deal with a difficult customer. Now, granted, you are opening yourself up to somebody going into a 10 minute whining episode <laughs> about a former customer and how people are stupid and whatever. So you have to keep things in context, but basically you can get a lot of information from open-ended questions. It's a little harder to score, but it should be hard to find the right perfect person for your team. So be prepared to put some energy into that process. So you've defined the role, it helped you define the ad, and now it's helping you define the criteria for actually hiring somebody. Make sure that you have enough questions that you've got a good sense of their technical ability, their training, their certification, how they deal with people, maybe even how they fit with your culture, right? It just steps right over across the board from one column to the other. And then when you finally hire them, that's when you go back to the last video and you set up their goals for the first quarter of employment. I'm a big fan of the 90 day probation period for lots of reasons, but basically, you should set up the goals for the first 30, 60, 90 days in advance and have conversations with your new employees about what those things look like. Again, all of them should support 
the role that you defined in the first place, the job description, and what you advertise that this job was about. You should be very, very consistent. And again, this is one of these things that seems like it's a little bit difficult, but when you do it, you realize there's such a natural flow all the way through from defining the job all the way to evaluating somebody at the end of the first 90 days. You've got consistency there because you did it with intention from the start. Too many jobs come into existence because we hired somebody who was a friend and they did a bunch of stuff for us and then we defined the job around that one person. Don't do that. That one person is by definition unique. You will never find another one. So when they leave, you're gonna scramble around redefining the job to fit this person and this person who are gonna now work together and do some of what that other person was able to do. That's not the way to build a scalable, successful, large business. So create a process that makes sense from job description all the way through evaluation at the end of the quarter. I would love to have your comments on this and in particular, any challenges that you've had, that you've overcome, what worked for you to make this a smooth process? For Small Biz Thoughts, this is Carl Polachuk wishing you the best of luck in your managed service business.